Checking in now, the Guru of the Greens, Doug Bell, of course, everything U.S. Open and that shot on 18 from Fitzpatrick. Let's call it a little Fitz magic because a lot of players yeah. watching him saying, you know what, I've never seen that, but the fact that he got it done, what did you see this weekend from him in that final round? Well, Brandon, this was the Academy Award winning performance of young Matthew Fitzpatrick's career, 27 years old. And yes, the future looks bright, but he will never topple this week's performance ever. It really was remarkable when you consider now he shot 68, 70, 68, 68 on the weekend. In that final round, he had 17 out of 18 greens. These are the smallest greens in U.S. Open history. And he only missed one green. And then as you described, that shot at 18 was remarkable. Uh, he and Billy Foster's caddy decided on a three wood off the tee to avoid that bunker. It was an automatic bogey for every golfer that got in there. John Rahm had a double bogey on Saturday from that same bunker. Will Zalatoris walked over and looked and said, ah, boy, uh, I'm looking pretty good at this stage. Of course, I'm paraphrasing, but young Matthew Fitzpatrick had the shot of his life up there on the green, had a birdie putt and now is the United States Open champion. There's so many great storylines here. Again, he won the US Am here in 2013. He and his family stayed with the same family in the same house they did back in 2013. And Billy Foster, his caddy, has been looping in professional golf for nearly 40 years. He's from the same hometown as Matthew Fitzpatrick in England. But before yesterday, Billy Foster had never carried the bag for a major champion. Uh, he carried for Seve after his major championships, carried for Darren Clark before his Open Championship, carried for Lee Westwood, who's never won a major championship, and now looping for 27-year-old Matthew Fitzpatrick. He was emotional as he took the flag off the stick there at 18. He'll put that on his wall back in England. But young Matthew Fitzpatrick, what can you say? It was the performance of a lifetime. He's only 27, but for the rest of his career, he will always be introduced as the 2022 U.S. Open champion. Remarkable performance. Yeah, he can now get rid of that 2013 pitcher. They're very young and slim, Fitzpatrick, <laughs> now to 2022, a pitcher he probably likes a little bit more. You brought up right. Will Zalatoris, the runner-up here, second consecutive major for him. He's always been in the pitcher. He kind of will remember this birdie putt, maybe wants to throw that one away, but what did you take away from his finish here in Boston? Well, look at his scores at the U.S. Open, 69, 70, 67, 69. I mean, that, that would usually win you United States Open. He had zero three putts for the week, zero. He had zero double bogeys for the week. You add the scores and all those things up, and usually that means he's going to be hoisting the USGA Championship trophy. But as he said, he's about an inch and a half away from being a three-time major champion. But that's golf. Now, everybody's saying, wow, Will Zalatoris, the future looks bright. And it does. He's only 25 years old. But again, these opportunities in these major championships, they come and they go. Yesterday, if he had driven the ball a little bit better, it led to early bogeys, which put him behind Fitzpatrick. Caught up in the middle of the round, but then a bad drive at 15 and a birdie by Fitzpatrick flipped the switch. So Zalatoris has to get back to work. We shall see. I hearken back eight years ago. Ricky Fowler finished top three in all four major championships, and everybody was saying the same thing. It's just a matter of time for Ricky Fowler to win a major. Hasn't done so. In fact, he's fallen off the radar. Couldn't even get into this week's U.S. Open. So Will Zalatoris needs to keep grinding. But again, the golf gods are fickle. Uh, he, he looks like he's going to be knocking on that door. But in professional golf, you just never no, it's been a heck of a run for Will Zalatoris. We'll see if it continues. You mentioned, of course, those top 10 finishes. He has six when it comes to majors so far, as you yeah. mentioned, still in the 20s and a lot of golf ahead of him there. Speaking of looking ahead, let's look at the Open St. Andrews in July. What are you watching? Who's catching your eye the closer we get there to Scotland? Oh, man, we're less than a month away, which is remarkable. Here's who I'm watching, uh, a guy named Tiger. Yes, oh, he didn't yeah. play the United States Open. You, you've heard of him. Sure. Um, his leg is getting better. He's getting stronger. St. Andrews, a place where he's won before, is a much easier walk than Augusta in Southern Hills. And I think he's primed because this will be the last time that Tiger Woods ever plays the Open Championship at St. Andrews. Think about that statement and think about what that means to him. I think he's going to be ready. For John Rahm, it's been a disappointing year in major championships. He's world number two. He shot four over par on Sunday at the U.S. Open. He's determined to make this season better. He has a win in Mexico in the PGA Tour, but has not fared well in the major championships. So he is motivated. And Patrick Cantlay, 
T14 at the US Open, almost the forgotten man, the reigning FedEx Cup champion. Again, hasn't played particularly well in the major championships. He's been okay, but I think the same word applies for Cantlay that it does for Rahm. He is motivated heading to the last major of the season. You look at the odds, obviously Rory playing very, very well. He will play the Travelers Championship this week, then take two weeks off in preparation for the Open Championship. There's Mr. Motivation, John Rahm. And oh, by the way, we forgot to mention Scotty Scheffler with Will Zalatoris, just one shot back in the US Open. So again, more world ranking points for Scheffler who continues to solidify his spot on top of the world. I can't wait for St. Andrews. I love it. It's the home of golf. I've played there. I've been there multiple times for major championships. It's really one of the most special spots on earth when it comes to professional golf championships. Can't wait. And of course, the big cat will make his triumphant return. Just like Tiger and others, plenty of downtime to tweak that game before we get there to the yes. open as always. Doug Bell always rocking the guns as always too. Checking in here on HQ. Don't forget the First Cut podcast. You can check the guys out, Rick Gaiman, Patrick McDonald, and Kyle Porter recapping what we saw there from Matt Fitzpatrick with the shot of the day out of that bunker on 18. And on his way to that PGA Tour first victory, download and give the guys a follow. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.